Rick was the uh, San Juan County Administrator for 27 years and is currently a, a San Juan County Emergency Management Director. Um, he studied Business Administration Management and Operations at USU and has been uh, involved in a lot of different areas of, of county management over the years. Uh, has worked closely with our office on a lot of different issues and uh, uh, particularly in the Emergency Management Director, uh, Emergency Management area has been really involved uh, with help, helping us to identify things that we can help share with other counties. Uh, with Rick today, co-presenting with him is uh, Lance Peterson, uh, Director of Weber County Emergency Management and Homeland Security. Uh, in his position, Lance is responsible for all disaster and emergency training and exercise in Weber County. Uh, he's also a member of the State Critical Incident Stress Debriefing Team, and, uh, and I'm sure as others can, can attest to if you're in charge of uh, responsible for all of anything in Weber County, you got a big job in front of you. So. I'm, a, I'm a director, they say. <laughs> a fun <laughs> sucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, get your notepads out once more, and uh, Rick, Lance, I'll leave it to you. Thank you, Thank you Karen. Well, Sonia called me, and she was in tears, and Sonia and I go back a long ways, and I can't tell Sonia no, but she asked for an hour, and I said, there's no way. And so I threw Lance under the bus, you saw the yellow school for the, the Astro Band in the Washington County. That's Lance's bus. He'd like it back. <laughs> it's already ran him over once. But Lance and I have known each other for a lot of years, and I recommended him to Sonia. He couldn't tell Sonia no either. So, so he's here. Lance uh, and I do have a lot in common. He has hair. I don't have any. I live in San Juan County. He lives in Weber County. Or do you live in Davis? No, I do. Uh, he works for the sheriff's office. I work for the county commission. So you know, we the only thing in common we really have is we wear boots, mm -hmm. and we try to be farmers and ranchers as a hobby. We never made any money doing that. <laughs> Good tax on that. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. So I appreciate Lance doing that. You'll learn more from him than you will me, but. Um, I can just tell you one thing, it, it, it's always good to have somebody with a fresh look come look at your place. Um, I've been involved in this risk management, and Crystal can attest to this, when, when, uh, who's the old risk manager, how come it's Mark? Mark would come down to the fairgrounds and look at our bleachers, he'd always write us up for that. And I kept saying, there's nothing wrong with our bleachers, they're just fine, we'll a little more straight. But we replaced them last year. And did we have a problem no. with the old ones? Yes, yeah. we did. But we didn't see it. I watched lots of little babies fall through those things. We didn't, and... we didn't see that problem until we got new stuff. And we had light poles rotting in the ground and they went in there. You know, so it, it, if I can say anything to you, two things. One, you don't have to do this on your shelf. Every county should have an emergency management person somewhere in yours. And they're really can be your asset. You give them the job to do to help you out, write your plans. You know, it's not your job to do all this. There, there's assets out there. So I would tell you that. Now, Crystal, everybody knows Crystal is a good working person, and she, she comes to this, and, and she's sacrificing, I want you to know, out of her. She's going to go to Bon Jovi in two weeks to see how they run the concert. Sacrificing <laughs> of her own free will and money so that she bring that back and, and uh, tell us all the errors we have and how we run ours. There you go. Isn't that where you're going? That's exactly why I'm going. Maybe they'll give me back space to see the past. Let me just tell you one experience I had. It wasn't with the fair, but it was with a rodeo. Uh, back when Salt House was in operation, I took my family up to the 24th day rodeo, and uh, we had some pretty good seats that time. You know, they always like right, do the bowl right and last, so you have to stay to the bitter end of the rodeo, you know. And, and they always have the one extra bowl in case they have to do a rewrite. Okay, that's what happened, that, you know. If they didn't have to do the rewrite, that night I was there. So that, but they let the bowls uh, bread and they, they drove them down the other end of the arena, put them outside in, in the pens outside. For some crazy reason, I've never figured this one out yet, but let's tell Lance the story, he laughs, so I think it's a pretty good story. Uh, 
they let the, they ran that bull down the bulls for shoots, and then instead of letting him out and going down to get in the back with the rest of the bulls and cows, they're called horses, they ran him and put him in a temporary pen just off the side of the bull shoots, all by himself, ground level with the concourse. And, and everybody's yes. done with the bull riding, and the bull's over there getting nervous. And I'm, I'm watching everybody else leave and not in a real hurry to go. And the bull starts, you know, strutting around the outside, of the, inside the panels. I thought, this is only a matter of time until they can see it. He's done. And pretty soon, a couple months later, he went over the, over the panel. Out onto the concourse where everybody was leaving, the entire rodeo, and he's running down the concourse. And I'm going, this is interesting. This is going to be good. So immediately, the cowboys, that's why like Lance and I can't be responsible. We, are, we aren't real cowboys. No. They tear down the temporary panel where the bull was, and all of them come out on their horses with their lariats. And what do they do? They're running in and out of the people trying to catch the bull on the concourse. But the bull was pretty smart. He got outside. And so I immediately went outside and watched him go down West Temple <laughs> on the full low with 25 cowboys and lariats after him. Oh, and about down there, oh, probably 50 or 6 out, they finally caught him and lassoed him and dragged, dragged him back up. And so don't ever leave the bowl alone in the pan when you can jump over. Did you have to pay extra for that? No, but that was the best part of the rodeo. And that, that really happened. Uh, so, you know, I, I just say, it, take, let somebody else take a look at what you're doing. I, with the tweet you're in, DLA, you know, I was trying to get rid of Mark. You know, everybody wanted to get rid of Mark when he came down to this. But, you know, we really had a problem when somebody from the outside really needed to take a look at some things. So, I just, that's one that I just do for you. Um, a couple of other things, you know. If you ever listen to Well and uh, Eubanks on Cape Town Five, what's the leading, the leading cause of death in Utah? What? Lightning. Mm -hmm. you, know, you talk about that every time there's. But you know, it's probably nothing we really plan for. And you know, I've gone to a couple of high school football games recently where Matt, they have this new rule: if you see lightning within the 10 mile distance or 20, I don't know. Anyway, they shut it down. For the players and officials, they take them off and the coaches. They leave the fans in the stadium in the seats. On the metal benches. Yeah, ah. to fend for themselves. But the players, you know, and you've seen it in the base for baseball games where they, you know, they empty, but they leave all the, you know. Uh, I'm not sure we aren't looking at. I mean, there's 50 players on the team. There's 30,000 in the stands or in the big stands. There's, you know. I think we're maybe overlooking where the risk factor there might be and how to get, get those people out of some areas. So that's, you know, I think that's really what uh, sometimes we'll look for is, is some of the things that aren't quite as obvious to us. So one of the great assets that the emergency managers can do for you is when we were talking about the wind gusts, I can't remember who yet, come out. NOAA, or National Weather Service, they're kind of the same group, but they do spot weather forecasts for you. You know, they do it for firefighters all the time. I mean, they're not wild fighting wildfires. And Lance would be glad to come down and work your fair for you. And he would call the <laughs> weather service awesome, yeah. every 20 minutes and get you so you can't tell them when the gust is on Windy Wednesday. Is, is yeah. coming <laughs> come up. So but that that they're they that's a great asset, man. They can pinpoint those storms coming in and uh, can tell you within you know, usually minutes when, when you're going to have a lightning storm or wind storm, change in temperature or whatever, and, and they're free and, they're, and they like to be used. Their weathermen are a little quirky. You have to them on the radio. They always like to be right, they're never wrong. Um, but, but that's a good asset, I think, that you can do. Um, one of the things, I don't know if clients will agree with me on this, but this, one of the things that we never want to do as emergency people, police, law enforcement, fire, is really to do an evacuation. Mm -hmm. um, that's just a really ugly scenario no matter how you look at it. And I think if you go back and look at the TV when they 
sanity pit. And some of these other, they're driving people out of their homes because they don't want to go. And you know it's the best that they go, but they always want to stay and protect their, their home or their animals or, you know, what, and, and I guess I get that side of it, but evacuations are really a tough thing to do. We've only evacuated in our county realistically twice in the 28 years I've been there. We evacuated Block when we had the manhunt some 20 years ago when the cop killers were out. And I'll tell you what, that was an ugly experience forcing people out of their houses. Um, you know, we do do spot evacuations for hazmat situations where, you know, we'll take some blocks and ask people to leave. But, you know, if you have to evacuate a fair, you know, I know our fair is pretty minimal in comparison to what Salt Lake County or Weber County numbers are. But I think the, the, the evaluation of trying to move that mass of people quickly because of something is not something you want to do. And I wouldn't recommend you just practice doing this, but it's something you need to consider. How are you going to move the mass of people out? Maybe that's something to happen. So do you have the answer? I don't really have an answer. You get to rain. Uh, you get to rain <laughs> about true. 10 o'clock on the last night. <laughs> You know you're going to have a mad house, and everybody's going to be running for the same exits. We know. did at our derby, and wasn't planning on it. Just the announcer come over and said, calmly walk to your cars for 10 minutes, and a lot of people stayed. A lot went. We didn't have, you know, I mean, we didn't have people running out or anything, but luckily we was okay. But The problem with the general philosophy of people is they're rubberneckers. They want to be where mm -hmm. they're like, oh, it's just a little bit of rain, just a little bit of wind, come on. Yeah. But they say that they're warm, but yeah. It, it's, it's a I tough was scared thing. to death. Yeah. How am I going to reschedule the derby? I'm going to have to deal with that. Well, <laughs> anyway, I, unfortunately, the other issue I don't think that, you know, we're dealing with this with schools now. And, you know, we, we're doing an active shooter exercise amongst all in a couple weeks. And we've got a school board member who thinks it's ridiculous that we do that. An active shooter exercise way where you actually have somebody with a gun inside the school. And, and he thinks it's bad because we're going to teach the kids, give them some ideas so that they'll do that on their own. So we don't ever practice or ever think about anything. But, you know, we don't have drugs in one cell either, guys, or we don't have you know, any. But, but there is that man, man mindset that you, know, you don't practice for anything because you don't want it to happen. And, and generally, it does happen. And uh, Murphy tends to show up on a pretty regular basis and, and makes things pretty miserable. So, you know, I, well, I don't know if we've ever had an incident in this state of somebody, you know, taking a hostage in a fair. But, you know, or a bomb in a fair. But if you want, want to get a congregation of people, at least in the small counties at one time, that's probably one of the bigger events that you'll have a lot of people to it in one place, one location. And, um, so, you know, the, and the emergency managers have all these stupid requirements the state federal government gives us that we have to do. And, and a lot of times we don't know what, we, we're looking for things to do. And, and to go out and play exercises, you know, a lot of times just make believe really aren't very fun either for us. So, you know, well, we might not say we're going to do a bomb, but we can practice some elements of a bomb thing. While your prayer's going on, you won't even know we're there. You know, we'll be testing communications, we'll be testing some other things that could happen that would help you if you had to do that. So, if you don't know who your emergency managers are, they're, they're, uh, you ought to go find them. Sometimes they're in the sheriff's office, sometimes they're in the fire department, sometimes they're by themselves. Every county is a little different than how they run them. But they have a lot of resources, they have a lot of equipment, generally. And unfortunately, we have some experience that, uh, that we can bring to the table that's not always been a real pleasant thing to deal with. But uh, I, if I can leave one message up, you know, I think a lot of the presentations, you know, we come and we dump everything on you and say, oh, here, here's another duty as, you know, as in your job description, as, you know, we want to give to you. There are people out there that will help you do this and, and probably take most of their responsibility. For a lot of years, at IAFE, IAFE presentations in Vegas or Rocky Mountain Fairs, 
they really schooled us a lot on how to do your own emergency planning and put your committees and things together. And we've been struggling for years to be able to do that because we don't do that on a daily basis. That we thought we had in place what we wanted or what we needed. And until you and the county got our new little guy you know, named Tal Aylers, I'm sure you know. He walks in and does this every minute of every day. He was able to do it in about three hours. What's taken me 10 years to do. So it's really a lot of relief. So yeah, what you're saying does work very, very well. We completely turned over a lot more to him once, once you know, he gained our trust. And yeah. it, it, it really made life a lot easier. No emergency plan, your county oh. emergency plan. Oh. Um, Lance, Lance is probably the expert in this, and that's why he's going to take the rest of the time. He, he's the only one that really knows that has a plan and has had to evacuate and do some things. I don't know. Disasters follow Lance around, so I don't know what he really wants to do. Thank you. I've been a disaster for quite some time. I think it's Lance's issue and problem, but, uh, you know, I'm just, they're, they're, and you're absolutely right. We need to test our communications way more often than we do. But, you know, sometimes it's just to go out and turn a radio on and have somebody go over the field to see if you can talk. You get to what we're doing. And so, you know, we, the guys little and gals will build the exercises within your, your events. And, you know, if you want to say I need communications between point A, B, and C, they'll look at that as a challenge and try to put something together for you. And, and they'll be able to write your plans for you, too, and, and help you go through that. Um, we're kind of, we kind of feel like we're the, Children. <laughs> yes. I was thinking of that worst word that I probably ought not well, to say. No, that. No, don't say that. And, and last night in the state are considered <laughs> real stepchildren of us because we kind of revolt us sometimes. But they're, they're out there, they'll, they'll be helpful to you. Um, and Lance is available 24 7. He'll give you his cell number and uh, everything else. It's if we can get his bus back for him, that's the only, <laughs> only requirement. He wants that yellow Astroman back. So, Lance? <laughs> um, it's an honor to be here. Um, I, I try to keep people's expectations of me pretty low, and so things just kind of mess that up, so I'm on the hot seat here. Um, a couple of things I want to get you introduced to a little bit of our nomenclature, our um, terminology we use. Um, uh, one time I was at a guitar store trying to pick out a couple of guitars and I was talking to the kid that was helping me and I was explaining to him what I wanted and he kind of looked at me with deer in the headlight look and I said, do you understand the verbiage I'm using? You know, I, I thought he would understand that. And he just gave me the deer in the headlight look like he started panicking and I said, I, you know, I'm sorry, I don't know the right term to use, you know, I, am I using the right verbiage? He said, sir, I don't understand the words you're using. And he didn't. So, Understanding the terminology is really key to be able to communicate. So uh, when you reach out to your county emergency manager, do, do you all know who your county emergency manager is? Or do you, is it, what county are you? Do you have to? Yeah, is it Fred Smiley? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm still waiting on a plan for him. Mine's Pete Cool. Yeah, Pete Cool. Pete's a good guy. Anybody else? Oh, and Jim, uh, all I can say is don't get any ideas from these people. That, that the last couple of presentations, I'm back there thinking yellow bus is junky. And I see people with days on the end. I don't, don't know. Get I don't know. Well, I don't know. Usually in my county, when things go bad, I'm the guy that has to come and fix it usually. That's when I get the call, say, Lance, we've had this problem, come and fix it for us. And they usually don't say in that terminology, say, oh, did you know this was going on? And no, I didn't know, but I'll make a phone call, and pretty soon I'm sucked into trying to fix it. Um, with, with Jim, usually. Oh no, Jim, those guys go good. They, 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 they're good. In fact, I've got a funny story to tell you about Jim in a minute or so. Uh, <laughs> the most recent one was uh, we had a flood uh, at our Weber County Center on a Sunday uh, afternoon, first. It like, wasn't just a flood. Oh no, it was, it was horrible. Uh, it was a broken fire hydrant outside the Weber County Administrative Building there. And the water flooded the basement, but it followed the, the duct work that came in on the first floor and followed all of our, our computer cables into their, you know how the IT guys have a, 
their, their room within a room and it's a black box and it's climate controlled and that's where all of the servers are and it followed right in and dumped in on there. We lost all of our phones, all of our computers. Here it is about one o'clock on a Sunday afternoon and I get the call about 3.30 from the sheriff. Were you aware of this? No, no, I haven't heard that. Of it. So I called the commissioner, yeah, you know, we're, we're told it might be worse than our transfer station when it caught on fire last fall, you know, which was probably a couple million dollars bill. And, and, and I thought, well, I'll go in and see what I can do. So I go in and I help out. Now the IP people like me because I can make things happen. Um, we're kind of action oriented. And so one of the things that we, we, we do is we, we call it an action plan, an IAP. It's an action plan. And that's one of our roles as a planner is to, to develop emergency contingency plans. And about 12 years ago, Jim calls me on a Thursday afternoon. He says, Lance, uh, I need help. Well, what's going on, Jim? You're a good buddy. I like him, and I'll do anything for him. And he says, next Friday, I've got the Honda Goldwing motorcycle show or something coming to our facility to inspect it, and they want to see our emergency plan. I don't have emergency plans. So we, in that one week, sat down with Jim, went through, okay, what do we need to do? What's the plan? We put it all in paper. It's very quick and dirty. You have an emergency plan for your facility overall because you hold other other things there at your fairgrounds other than these fairs. So you have a, an emergency plan that basically says very simply who's going to do what if we have this kind of emergency. If we have an emergency, and, and you can't plan for every contingency, but uh, one of the things that comes out of my mind here is uh, an easy way when we're talking is policy. An emergency plan has a lot of policy in it. Um, back in 2009, well, I started working for the county in 99, and our county emergency plan was a 1986 plan. That's when it was written. It was a thermonuclear war evacuation plan for Weaver County. That was our county emergency plan. I came to work, and I knew I had a challenge. So. When I presented the new plan to the commissioners, I explained to them in commission meeting, please read it, it's got a lot of policy in it. Because let, let's talk about the lightning event, okay? At what point do you make that decision to close down your fair if there's lightning 20 miles away? Or 10 miles away? When, when do you feel, I mean, you, you hate to shut down things for, a non -even, for, for something that's not gonna happen. But at what point do you take that chance? Okay, and it's easy to fall back on the policy. Uh, you know, what's your fair policy? Do you have a, a policy, or is it in our emergency plan that the commissioners, the attorneys have all signed off on? That's an easy one to fall back on, because in the heat of the battle, you don't want to have to make it, it's it's easy to fall back to policy. Well, our policy says that ten miles we shut down, so it's ten miles away. We better shut down, rather than agonizing. Make the call or don't I? Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And if, 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 if something I say doesn't make sense, just raise your hand. Don't give me the deer in the headlight look, okay? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Um, so, so if you'd like a copy, it, it's very simple. You know, we, we kicked this out for Jim in just, you know, what, four days. I, I met Jim in the parking lot on Thursday afternoon. It was like a drug deal going down. I don't know. <laughs> And I handed him a copy and a disc with it on, and said, here you go, Jim. And he had his meeting the next day, and I hope it helped. I never did hear it, did well, they, The group came, they were satisfied with the fine job you did, and they came to town and brought the pounds of Pulled the rabbit out of the hat, and that's what we, we do sometimes. Now, now, getting back to this incident of action planning, uh, <clears throat> one, one other thing that I do a lot with is the Ogden Marathon. Uh, I got involved with that right from the get go 12 years ago. And it was a bunch of cops. Uh, that's, that's, $100. That's, $100. that's $100. That's how we make the money out there. That's how we make the money out there. There you go. And, and I showed up. I'm not a cop. Uh, I'm a civilian. I, I'm an emergency manager. I work for state emergency management. 
And I started documenting everything. I had my myself there during the marathon, and we kept a log of everything that happened. <clears throat> when we closed down the canyon, and you know, problems, medical problems, all sorts of logs in there. And they just all kind of laughed and scoffed at me. And I made a, a doc map. Uh, back then, uh, in 99, well, 2000, I think, when we started the, the, the marathon, um, I printed out this huge map of the, of the route. And then I took those little sticky red dots and yellow dots, and I put them on the map. You know, the red dots were where we had traffic closure signs, and, and um, yellow was, was um, uh, law enforcement officer, blue was an ambulance, this blue, this green 16, that's the aid stations, and everybody just kind of ignored me. And then the next year, when we sat down to plan with everybody, I let them suffer. Uh, they sat around for about 20 minutes. Well, yeah, what? Well, yeah, let's plan on next year. What did we do last year? And I just sat there. I had my action plan and my log and my map all rolled up. It was on the floor. They struggled for about 20 minutes trying to figure out and remember what they did last year. And so I pulled it out and I said, well, we closed it at 0600, you know, the, the canyon. And oh, and here's my, my dot map. And they all of a sudden, the light clicked on. And we started having every year uh, thereafter what they called a dot map party, where we would sit down and pull that out and we would start putting dots where we want. So the documentation is a, is a big thing. Um, so that you can, not just for liability's sake, but for documenting what you did, and so you can make your planning easier the next year. And now, you know what our planning meetings for the marathon are? Um, we had one two weeks ago, and I thought it was a planning meeting. And, and pretty soon everybody says, so Lance, is that enough information for you to make the changes to next year's plan? And it became a Lance Peterson party. <laughs> um, how did this happen? So, so it's turned into one meeting where they tell me of any changes I got to put in the IAP, and boom, there we go. So uh, for what that's worth, that's, that's uh, that's a little something about what we do. Um, now, let's go back to this IAP a little bit. And, and I apologize here. It's late in the day. I'm the last guy to talk to you. Um, I'm going to hand you out some little forms, OK? And you're going to look at them. What the hell is this? So um, bear with me, OK? Just just go along with me for a while. And, and what I'm handing to you here is incident objectives. You're all familiar with management by objectives, are you? What, what's management by objectives? And that's not rhetorical. What's management by objectives? Johnny, you got a small. You decide answer. what your goal is and you manage towards the goal. Okay. Goal. So when it comes to putting on a fair, and this is going to tie into management here, I'll put that down there. Okay. What's your goal? When you guys pull off a fair, what's your goal? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Washington County? No, no. Sevier County. Yeah, I've, we've got to go to a fair in Sevier County. Like, uh, you, Jim, don't you get any ideas from me? Uh, so, what are you? You're trying to have fun, okay? What else? It brings the county together. So it's just yeah. a county party mm -hmm. to celebrate. Mm -hmm. County party to celebrate, have fun. What else? The county. Huh? Promote the county. Promote the county. Eat. Make some revenue. Maybe some oh, revenue. Yeah. If you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. lucky. Mm -hmm. The plus. Okay. Yeah. This is guess what's the instructor thinking here? Okay. <laughs> so what, what? What? Add to that. You're you're on a roll. Have fun. Promote the county. Generate a little revenue. County celebration. County celebration. Uh, and have people get hurt. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Have a safe. I don't think that's our goal. Fun <laughs> event. Okay. Is that safe? 
Is that yeah. safe to say? Yeah. Okay, safe funding in that promotes the county, da 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 da, all those other things you guys said, okay? So I'll put some dots here. There you go, okay? Do y'all buy into that? So, how do you make it safe? How do you make it fun, okay? What are our objectives? So objectives are the things we're going to do. What are we going to do? What we do. <clears throat> See, I had a state education song. <laughs> what are we going to do to have a safe plan? What are we going to do? So, what are the, so from the public safety emergency management side of the, the picture, what are some of the objectives that we would want to put in our documentation. <clears throat> Do you guys have to have traffic control? Yes. Okay, so we're going to have traffic control. So we would have a little objective about, we're going to have traffic control, blah, 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 blah. Maybe at this road and this here, and we're going to have traffic signs, da, 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 da. So we can generally say what we're going to do. We can provide good, safe access, ingress, egress, traffic control, blah, blah, blah. That's, I'm a farm boy, so that's, that's And then we can get down, we, so we have our strategies, and I am giving you guys the nomenclature here, the verbiage, okay? So, so you understand what we're talking about, strategies, general, broad things. And then we get down to tactics, and if you use tactics on cops, what are they going to think? SWAT, okay? <laughs> no, I can say <laughs> So this is in the broad sense of the term. So we have this goal, we break it down to objectives and strategies. Kind of, usually I use objectives and strategies are kind of the same. And then tactics break that down to very specific. We're gonna have one officer at this corner, we're gonna have a sign down here, we're gonna have um, you know, somebody doing traffic control over here, we're gonna block this road off, we're gonna make this road one way, blah, blah, blah. Those are our tactics. So, so that's some of the nomenclature, verbiage, terminology we use there. Um, and we can keep going on that, but you, you got the idea, right? That's how we break it down. All right. Now another goal is management. We, we need to manage the event. How many of you find yourselves during or throughout the event getting what I call sucked into tasks, tactics. That, that's what tactics are, tasks. You get sucked down into ta uh, tactics or tasks. <sighs> Can't spell anymore either. Tasks, tactics, or specific little assignments. Okay, so that's how we break down our strategies, down the tactics and specific assignments instead of being an overall manager. I think most of us do, don't we? And yeah, oh, yeah. The yeah. 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 yeah, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's so hard yeah. not to get drug down to those tactics, down to that level. Now, and I used this on, on paramedics a long time ago, uh, back in the 90s when I was trying to teach them how to, how to break out their, their um, management tasks and I'd ask him, okay, if, if Johnny's hurt here, okay, and Andy's over here taking care of him, doing patient care, is Andy in control of the scene? Is he managing the scene? No, what's he doing? He's managing the patient, he's providing patient care. So I explained to those guys, you gotta have somebody stop and not get sucked into the tactics or the tasks and be the manager, okay? Manager should not be and, and I don't throw anything at me, okay? The manager should not be running around the fair, putting up this tent, making, doing this bleacher thing, okay? Because then you're not managing the event, are you? You're putting up a bleacher, you're putting up a tent, you're running money run over here, you're making sure this food gets delivered here, blah, blah, whatever. I, I see you shaking her. Make, making it. sure, making sure the yellow bus has got a road to go down. <laughs> yeah, but how do you do that? That's just impossible. I, I, I know that, and, and that's why I said don't throw anything at. Okay, it's really tough. 
Okay. We have what we call in emergency management an incident management team. And, and that's one thing I kind of do, and I have to be very careful uh, out at our fairgrounds, because I'm not on the fair board, uh, I'm not part of the planning team, I'm an outside guy that comes in with the county mobile command post. And I, uh, this last couple of years, I've only been there every other year, because I have an assistant now that takes care of me the other days when I'm not there. And we have an incident management team that's there as management, to help out, but we do not delve into Jim's world. We try not to delve into Jim's world, but we have a radio in our command post to where we can communicate with Jim and all of his folks, so we can communicate. I have a radio in there where we're talking to the law enforcement and, and communicating that way. I bring out my six by six rangers with med beds on them. Uh, we oversee, we work with the, the the paramedic teams that are there. We usually have two to three teams, um, and I let them use my rangers, you know, six by sixes with a with stretcher on them, and, and uh, they do whatever they do. And they have a couple of aid stations, if I remember right, Jim. Okay? So we kind of provide a little overarching incident management to the public safety side, and we provide that connection. Can't read my writing. I can't even read my rifle. So uh, we provide a connection back to Jim and his people as that incident management team. Yes, Jim. Let me just to to you guys on. It works great for us because if there's ever an incident for us, like a lost child or a uh, or somebody gets hurt or somebody gets drunk in a fight, all my guys know to go to mobile command. That's what we call it mobile command command center they have access to all the different channels so they then can get on their frequencies to talk to the Ogden City paramedics or the sheriffs or the whatever uh, uh, law enforcement agency that would handle that because that's you know sometimes we get sucked into trying to handle a fight or trying to run a kid around the fairgrounds well we're not we don't know their parents necessarily and then there's the, all the liability that could go because you held the kid's hand wrong or they think you're a perv now <laughs> you know you just you let you just let the people who are professional and know how to handle it take care of it and that gives them responsibility during your event and it's worked out we've done this now for a decade plus it's worked out fantastic plus they can go on the other side with, with their technology they ain't got these cameras and they can spot on different things and it really makes it really great so i getting your your emergency management guys involved has been just uh, great for us terrific for us thanks jim yeah having oh, her really? baby choking i'm like oh oh my gosh yeah wow, wow. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, thanks Jim for that. I didn't realize we, you liked us that much. Wow. <laughs> take me to lunch. Take me to take me up. It's a good service. Here's, here's another form, okay, just an example of some of the forms we use for our incident action plan, okay? Um, and, and this is one I use to document where our medical guys are and our aid stations. So, um, and the glasses out here. Uh, in that block, we've got eight stations, so I, I list right in there, where are my eight stations? So it's documented, okay? Because you never know if there's going to be a lawsuit, this stuff becomes your, your backup. Uh, and ground ambulance, you know, where we got them staged, we usually have a couple there, depending on what time of the, the fair it is. And then there's some information about staging for air ambulances. We, we brought one in a couple years ago. Um, and and uh, where's the hospital clinics and things like that. So this is just part of that documentation. I didn't I, I didn't want to overwhelm you with five or six, seven, eight different forms, but just a couple of them. Okay, your medical plan. Uh, you can have some other plans that that you really ought to take a look at, uh, especially when it comes to evacuation. Um, you know, I think the busiest times, is it safe to say some of the busiest times is when you're loading and unloading your events, right? Is that, 
you know, I, I know for us, Saturday night, demolition derby. We do not look forward to that night. We, we don't. And that's the money maker. That's a, that's a big money maker. It's a huge hit. Okay? But we, we, get, we get tons of people there. And the loading in of the menu that night and the unloading of it, that's a, that's a huge thing. So kind of goes in line with the evacuation plan. Um, you know, last year, um, uh, in closing, I, I, I was not working this evening, but Eli was, my, my assistant. Uh, and I get weather alerts on my smartphone. You guys can set that up to where you get weather alerts through your smartphone uh, specific to your area. Okay. Which one is it? National Weather Service. Oh, it's, that's the one still? Okay. Yeah, I think it comes out INWS. You can go online and sign up. But your emergency manager should know. Okay. Of course, if you're in county, you've got a new emergency manager now. You do. Mr. Willis. Mike Willis. Yeah, is it Mike Willis? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So he, you can always call him and say, hey, how do I get my signed up for this if you need help on But uh, I remember I was home, and um, I got the alert, and I thought, and I bring it up, and I can see the, the clouds coming in towards Beaver County, and, and uh, Eli was following it in the command post, too. And I can't remember, because I wasn't there, Jim. Wind and light. Wind and light. And I, if I understand right, they were in the middle of evacuating the soccer field at the north end when the lightning began on the south side. Is that right? We're talking about a lightning strike within uh, 500 feet, maybe 1,000 feet of soccer. It was maybe 10 miles away, 7, 8, 10 miles away, then all of a sudden, crack. Crack. And it was, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and they were, luckily it wasn't on the north side where the kids were being pulled off of the soccer field. And as a result, I think one deputy had to go home and change his pants. Because uh, he, was, he was really close. I mean, it was right there on the south side of the fairgrounds. So uh, that, that hits home. I mean, you know, at what point do you do that? Because you're trying not to interrupt the event. And so that's why I say sometimes have a plan. Have that kind of stuff. It's hard decision written into your plan. It's a policy. You know, run it past your policy board, your fair board, or whatever, and say, okay, when do when do I close this down? And you guys don't get mad at me because what if? Because ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it's not going to happen. And and we keep we keep um, we keep betting on what, what's the what's the right term? Uh, there's a little phrase about that. We're we're just betting on a week in a prayer, really. And we've been lucky, you know, okay. Because uh, one of these times we're going to say, oh, no, it ain't going to hit, and it's going to hit. Mm -hmm. So it's easy, I think, sometimes to fall back on that so that when you're in the middle of the battle, and that's some of the terms I use, is when you're in the middle of the operation, uh, you don't have to make a hard decision and anguish over that. You've got something to fall back on. So, well, policy says this, and hopefully that's the right policy. Can I jump in again yeah. one more time? I remember a situation maybe about 18 years ago. We have this in place, and... We didn't have, the, obviously, the technology is not in place like we have today. And I remember actually standing atop the stadium where we have our demolition derby. There's five, 6,000 people inside there. The derby is now loaded. One heat's underway. And there's lightning coming in from the south. We can see it. That's a great vantage point for us. But we can see it coming over the mountains. And I just talked to the commissioner. And I said, this is our plan. This is what, what do you want to do? And he, of course, commissioner has the ability to override policy, and, but it was great to have somebody else right there because we decided not to evacuate. But like you mentioned, which was which hit home with me, resonated. If it's going to be your job or whether or not somebody dies, and I don't know about you guys, but we got these eight lightning rods that are, they call them light poles around that stadium, and they're 80 feet in the air, yeah. and so. But it was good if you have a chance and you can get somebody that's a policymaker, like a commissioner or a mayor or whatever you work for. You get them alone. That's it. You get them removed. That's a good way to go. Protect you because I, I don't want to cash in my job necessarily, but I, I agree with what he said earlier in his presentation. You know, so. Whose call little, is it? That's, that was kind of our thing. Was the commissioners. 
One of the things, I'm gonna, us new, so. I'm going to pop in here again, too. One of the things we just put in our contract, everything we did, from the attorney's office, our county attorney's office, is right in the contract, we have a right to close down the event. If there's an act going on, we will take possession of the event. And they sign off on that, that whatever we deem necessarily, it could be in the interest of public safety, that we will take control of the event. The and fire? And the whatever it is, that whatever. that's... I, See, it was our fire the, the, so I think he's meaning to take over the event, whether it's rides, a show, or a fair or one of y'all, a service, they can whatever control. you got. We take back over control because I don't want a promoter or a bounce house guy or whoever it is making a decision on public safety where he's there once a year. Yeah. Right. You've got to make the, and that's a tough, tough it's the, deal. It's the county's call. And the county's call. It's the county's call. And whoever they, because see, a lot, we got if, a lot of flack. If the commissioners delegate down to you. Or yeah. the commissioners, with this, this fire marshal headed, I mean, and we're glad he did, believe me. Yeah. I mean, you know, but there was a lot of talk around town. That, well, and I think, I think I that's mean, why you know, having it be the policy is, yeah. is the way to go, because when the event happens, yeah, you'll have the vendors saying, you're not shutting down my event. Well. It was in the agreements because that's our policy. We shut down the fair at when there's a storm within 10 miles. Well, not so exactly. But she just would have come to one of us. You'll, you'll also get the one county commissioner that comes and says, you're not shutting it down. And you can say, yes, we are commissioner because the commission agreed to a policy that we're shutting it down well, at this point in time. We can't take direction from an individual commissioner. We can yeah. only take direction from the county board. We're getting some of those things in policy ahead of time. Yeah. Key, I mean, you get that in there, that protection. You, you've got to have that. I mean, it's hypothetical. The general manager says that he's the one that's going to make that call, but you got to remember that the general manager may be home Sometime yeah. when something happens, so you got to. There's got to be a line of authority somewhere, so that That's what I you know mean, when yeah. he's gone, you know that this is the guy to get a hold of. But at the same time, that person has to know that they're that person that's going to make that call. Yeah. Because it just gets bottled up, and then I mean, waiting for somebody to do something ensures nothing's going to get done. Yeah. And I think it's so. Well, thank you. Good points. Um, yeah, so, so basically what I'm talking about here, Rick and I are talking about two different levels of plans. The general plan, the one that's got the policy in it, the, the, the one that, that disappears. Oh, there it is. Okay. This one here, this is kind of, and, and this is probably not a good example. It was quick and dirty. I've never written one for a fairgrounds before. And this was for the event, the, the event center. So this is a center plan. That's the general plan. And then you have the very specific event plan. I gave you a couple of those forms where, okay, this is the event we're gonna have, whether it's a marathon or a demolition derby or a fair or whatever. Your, your event there is involved in more than just the fair probably, your, your event center. And that's the event plan, very specific plan for this event on this day, and this is how we're gonna manage it. And it's kind of a management plan. And that's kind of the, Couple of quick and dirty things to give to you. Any questions at all, or any you, more? You need to put your cell phone down so they can contact you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's your, you know, that's P. That's Mike Leffler and Bo Shane, and and on and on and on. So, does anybody not know who their county emergency manager is? Okay, uh, and tell them Rick Bailey told you to call them. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope that was, oh, yes, sir. I have a question. I, I went to a training a month and a half ago. We, we were able to use an ICATS exercise. Uh, is that something that emergency management eventually would have available for other people to utilize? I found it to be real beneficial. I mean, the lifetime, it, what it is, is it's, it's, you know, it's a computer generated real time exercise for you guys that. Don't know much about it. it, 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 it correct me if I'm wrong, but what it does is we were able to take and design a venue. We sent it to this place back east, I guess, and then they they created injects and injected things in like disaster real time. 
one of the things that happened in, in the exercise that I was part of is they chose to evacuate the building but didn't tell anybody. So now we're dumping people into the parking lot. The parking officials have no, no idea what's going on. So what it is is it's all, you've got to type everything and the injects come across your screen. So it's basically like a radio communication at your fair. There's going to be a point where you're not going to see something or you're not going to hear something because radio depressed, you're, you're missing things as you're on the radio. And I just thought it was a real beneficial thing to have, and it's something that a lot of people I don't think know exists, but I think that it's something that, I don't know if Homeland Security does it or who does it, but to me it was, it helped to get that, to get off of that tabletop exercise level and up to that next, yeah. Yeah. next point. Yeah, every time you can do some kind of a little exercise and, and I would suggest if you've never done anything, just to do a very simple, basic tabletop walk before you can run, um, and and talk through. Okay, if we have an event, um, we're, if we're sponsoring an event or holding an event, and we have this kind of an incident there, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle it? And you can pull your planning team together uh, with public safety and your emergency manager, and, and kind of talk through and figure out this stuff. If you don't already have it, uh, people always say, "Oh, we, we don't do exercises until we have a plan." Well, I totally disagree. After 22 years, uh, you can use this kind of exercise to help you develop your plan. In fact, you're crazy if you don't. Okay, and and it can be when I created Hazmat Team in our county. It was very simple. I <coughs> sat down and said, "Let's do a tabletop." Okay, we have a Hazmat incident. No specifics. I said, well, how are we going to respond? How are we going to pull all six fire departments together to respond? And we came out of there with the good makings of the plan. So there's also out there, I, uh, back in the... Can I make another suggestion there? Yes. For all of you who are involved at your fairgrounds, if, if I would volunteer. It's been very helpful. I sit on that Weaver County Hazmat team, and it's, I would volunteer your time to go to do that. Because you have access to resource that would be needed in a in a situation. People, it's not just people that need to be helped during an emergency. We have our fairgrounds is we do a lot of different things. We got pieces of equipment. We have obviously got places we can stall or take care of livestock. We may have water where others don't. We depends on how bad the incident is though. We have a more clear direction on what's expected us if things go to crap in a hurry. Great. Uh, there's also this, uh, a few years ago, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, I helped FEMA develop a little independent study. Well, it was a class for special events planning. Um, and I think they turned it into an independent study. I haven't seen an independent study. Uh, but you could talk to your county emergency manager and say, hey, how do I get onto the FEMA site to take this little special events independent study class? Uh, probably take you an hour or two to go through it real quick. And, you know, um, there might be something in there. Uh, I do have, I think I had a book from Australia. I think I had the original special events book from, from this. Uh, what did we put out this on? But, there, there's a couple of resources out there, especially if you Google special events planning, uh, emergency planning, or something like that, you, you might find some resources out there to help you. But don't be paranoid, be prepared, and it'll be okay. Put together a little uh, incident management team, and a lot of the counties will understand, well, all of the counties should understand an incident management team, IMP. And if you need help, uh, if you need help, your county emergency manager can call the other county emergency managers, the other 28 in the state, and ask for a little mutual aid help to come out and help, help manage. So yeah, Rick, Rick and I are available through that process of mutual aid to come help and, and help you be an incident management team. Not to take it over, but to help with that communication, documentation, coordination, and planning. So, uh, um, just go through your county emergency management, we're, but we're, we won't come in and take over. Uh, we'll come in. Any other questions? All right. Well, fantastic.
digestive stuff. It, 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 is this the type of thing that people have even thought about or, or have an idea about implementing at their, at their county? I mean, it's, you know, all of this, as we get started with these things, it's, it's baby steps. And, you know, where now we think there's no way that the fair manager can really keep themselves out of taking care of little things that go on at the fair and really oversee the main event. But it's something that has, it's a goal to get to that 10 years from now, that's where we're going to be. Our, our fair manager is not going to take choking babies from the hands of mothers. They are going to oversee the event and they, they, we will have the people in place. And, uh, you know, when you start calling in people like the hazmat teams, the emergency management, the, the deputies and things like that, you'll find you'll get a whole new grade of volunteer that they really enjoy and they live for this kind of stuff. And, and right now, I don't think we're taking as much advantage of, of them and their resources as we can. So um, I, think, I think that's really good to at least start, start the discussions and uh, try and work towards uh, the, the fair that we'd all love to have. Risk-free, safe, and fun. Um, so I uh, want to thank you all for making it today. I, I, I think the discussion was really good. Again don't always have all the answers to everything because some of the answers aren't there yet. And I think if we continue to do this, get together, work together, find new people to come in, like Andy and Lance and, and Rick, to uh, give us a new perspective on things that eventually we'll, we'll be coming here and saying, well, we know how to take care of that. We, we have that answer. So we'll get there soon. Again, please uh, fill out your surveys uh, when they come to you in the email, and please, where it says, do you have any ideas for next year, don't leave that blank. Um, anything, even, uh, except for uh, have hot dogs instead of these things. <laughs>